It's I'm right. right. I, I'm I'm a sucker for them. I I watch oh, so many of those puppy reels. It's like, oh my god. Puppies we're hoping this one works because yeah, my mom is uh, she has an allergy, so we're hoping the hypoallergenic of this one because it's a labradoodle. We're hoping she's okay with it. It seems more Labrador than poodle so okay. far, but okay. uh, she's so cute. Whenever she sees or hears something weird that she's never seen before, she puts her arm up in the little like pose. Oh, yeah. like like the yeah. Monitor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's so cute. I have a my my Shih Tzu used to do that, and they are not like hunting really? dogs. They're like little lap dogs. But yeah, he would he would do it. Hmm. He he nice. looks like a little Ewok. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I love it. One of my favorite reels to watch is the the show your dog as a puppy and then show them now. Right. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Oh, well, we should get started here. It looks like we got a couple of people watching. Hey, cool gamer. Cool gamer. Hey, Anita, how we Anita. doing? Welcome, everybody. We are back from hiatus. It's been a month, but that month went by super fast. Blast. Where did it go? <laughs> I don't know. Man. I don't know. I was here, there, and everywhere, so I don't know. <laughs> Blink it. It's all of a sudden November. What the heck? Yeah. 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 Now it's fun doing the retail rush at the store. For November, December, it's True. just going to be, I'm going to be on my feet so much. Burning yeah. so many calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed gonna... it too. Like I, I dropped by a shopping center where it's usually not that busy, but it does have some of those big box type stores in it. And I, I was just going to pop in real quick to grab some groceries from Sprouts. I was like, why is the parking lot so full? Oh, it's November. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yes. Christmas is coming. Just like Christmas that. Christmas is coming. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Yeah. Winter? Winter is coming. <laughs> and and like I said pre-show, I am already ready to put up my Christmas decorations. I don't mm. care if it's too early. I don't care that Thanksgiving's coming. I want that warm glow of the lights twinkling mm. on the tree. Yes. We get some happiness. Mm. <clears throat> yes. I like to refer to Thanksgiving as first Christmas. Mm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you eat all the food. So I don't see anything you, wrong like, with decorating for a month for, and open yeah. presents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I get the nice station that builds too. Like you, you know, you put mm -hmm. the tree up, and then slowly presents start going under the tree, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, "Ooh, what's in there?" That that yeah. anticipation kind of you know creates that again that that warm, happy feeling that we want to kind of mm -hmm. foster right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I get the nice warm glow of my bearded dragon's heat lamp. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. That works. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. And I'm sure he appreciates it too. <laughs> she loves it. Yeah, she loves it. All right. Well, let's jump in and get started. Welcome, everybody. This is Spilling Ink. We are the talk show that brings you behind the book to see the authors and, <clears throat> excuse me, authors and professionals in the publishing industry. My voice just went out for no reason. <laughs> you guys all know Derek. He has been here many times. He is a show favorite. So, Derek, can we pause Favorite, on you for a second whatever, so that we can whatever. introduce our new author? What do you want from me, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I am a sci-fi author, Derek Bourne. I have now 12 books to my name. That includes seven novellas. Um, it's uh, I have a superhero spy series, The Ultimate Agent, which consists of 10 books. And now I have Dino Rift and Sorcor Salvation, just came out November 1st for Sora Court, and I am super, super excited for people to read this because it is another love letter to my fans. Uh, I had a ton of fun writing it, even though I did have moments where I would, you know, imposter syndrome, it, it, it seeps in, and sequel pressure is real. Uh, I, I would assume that JL De La Vega is also maybe feeling some sequel pressure because she's working on her sequel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is real. Yeah, it's it, it's a real thing. But well, do we I, want to introduce your your book, JL? While we're talking about it, yes. my name is JL De La Vega. I am a dark fantasy steampunk author. This is my debut novel. It is a fantasy western, um, Smoke and Other Storms, book one in the Revere trilogy. It's about a family of all female outlaws competing with an explorer in a poisonous desert to find a lost fortune. Mm. Love it. <clears throat> Lots of good elements it. there. 
Yeah. I read her synopsis on TikTok live last night in my movie movie voice. Oh, it was it was amazing. <laughs> wait, wait, I need to hear this. I, I need to hear this movie voice. Uh, in a world, one man <laughs> must stand alone. <laughs> I can't quite do it as well as Ryan Reynolds. He does a great movie voice. No, that was good. That was good. No, that was really good. <laughs> but would you would you read the synopsis for us? I, I mean, I can. It, it, it gets a little raspy, and I lose it uh, part way through. But let's see. <clears throat> Welcome to the rim. Come seek your fortune in a paradise of endless sun. Land is cheap, and the possibilities endless. Where the edge of the map meets the end. The mining campaigns always forget a few details. Moon season makes storms volatile. You're more likely to be killed by your neighbor than strike a crystal vein. And there's only one name you should bother knowing around here. Revere. Moira and her granddaughter Adelaide are professionals, smugglers, thieves, and arms dealers. The Revere women have lifted their family business from the dust. And with their train, they've become the most notorious gang in the territory. After an accident damages her sister's eyes, Adelaide finds an opportunity that will not only pay for a sight-saving operation, but pull the family from the shadows of the back market for good. Accompanied by her sisters, Adelaide guides a survey crew into the uncharted West Rim, a poisonous desert concealing untapped riches, with the full intent to claim the fortune for themselves. But when Moira learns a bounty has been placed on the family, she discovers a deeper plan already in motion. It will change the rim forever. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well done. You know, that was your rehearsal last night. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go live with JL last night, but she doesn't have enough followers on TikTok. So I, I was very, I was like, oh. I'm a, I'm a TikTok newbie. That's okay. I don't have enough. I got, either, I got so. two new ones today. Hey. Well, that's I, think, awesome. I, I think if I post consistently, I can get I can get up there. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Uh, do some more cat videos. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Animals. That should do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gotta I gotta send more people over to your profile. It's it's my mm -hmm. new mission. <laughs> so let me ask because we've touched on TikTok before. How much time do you spend really crafting your videos and and maintaining like a, a regular posting schedule? Is crafting a thing? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do, I, do I need to pull up your video? Do I need to pull it up? Uh, crafting crafting <laughs> plots? What are those? I think I need to pull up his video. Honestly, yeah. for me, I, I, I get an idea that just pops in my head and I just go, yep, I'm filming it. And that's and it. And how long does it take you to film, edit, and... I because I've been doing cooking videos for three years now, I have an editing app right on my phone. And it's just to me, it, even just to do a small TikTok video literally takes me less than five minutes. What? Oh, my God. Wow. wow. Depending, I depending. Really, yeah, I spend <laughs> probably like half an hour doing one and like they're not even like that elaborate of like three yeah. weeks. Yeah. I think the most elaborate one for me though, I will admit that probably took me a good 20 to 30 minutes was there. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, fashion week. Okay. And there was Dan Kenner who I, he's awesome. He, he writes kind of in the same style as me. Uh, he did his version of fashion week with his books. And so I took that and I did my own version of fashion week. Mm -hmm. And it was it was pretty elaborate for me, but yeah, this one this one was fun. One. No, this no, I need. Fun. I'm gonna need to go watch that. This was yeah. literally release morning. Mm -hmm. The first October's over. I need some tea. Wait. Oh. What? Hold on a sec. What? What? Oh, hey, there's my writer's tears whiskey. I'm gonna have some of that later. But if those were there and that's here, then hey, Ziki, do you know what day it is? <gasps> it's Sorcor Salvation Release Day. Let's all celebrate by making book angels. <laughs> and don't forget to snag your copy today. Sorcor Salvation out now. The best part was when I I had all my books on the floor 
And I went up to my wife and I said, can, can you get a bird's eye view of me for like 10 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yes, dear. <laughs> she's, she's used to it by now. <laughs> yeah. She's thrown books at my face. She's yeah. <laughs> oh, those were funny. All right. That, that was, that was yeah. a really, that, that, one, that one really made me laugh, especially the book angels part. I think that was my favorite. <laughs> Uh, but honestly so that creative. just it, it popped in my mind i was just like I can, i'm just gonna put books all over the place and mm -hmm. then the book angels thing literally came as i i finished everything else i'm just that, like that i gotta was, do something random that was good yeah yeah it was it was i was not expecting that but I was, yeah, that's excellent yeah, we all wish we could do that with our books right do the whole like yeah. scrooge scrooge mcduck thing you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> swim in our books right if mine ever come yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will if you yeah. write it they will come yes. Yes. well four of them need to go out to to people oh yeah been waiting for them so <laughs> and is I'm that like beta arc readers yeah. um no no nope. uh winners of uh oh. stuff for from release day of the trilogy nice. So nice. I sort of added that in as a surprise. Guess what you're getting? Nice. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it hasn't come yet. No. Which reminds <laughs> me, I have someday. to pick a winner in my group. <laughs> yep, exactly. I'll sign it and send it. Nice. <laughs> Here's another question too, because I know you're primarily on TikTok. And now that YouTube is doing shorts, Facebook is doing reels, Instagram is also doing reels. Are you now having to post in all the locations, or are you just choosing TikTok and saying, I'm just sticking with TikTok? I'm, I'm sticking with TikTok. Uh, Facebook and TikTok seem to be the biggest ones for me. I don't spend nearly enough time. I don't even use Twitter. Um, I rarely ever do anything to Twitter. But uh, Instagram, I have a love-hate relationship with because I do so much with the store. And then I get to my book stuff and I'm like, eh. Uh -uh, eh. Um, but yeah, Facebook, TikTok, I don't really have a booktube channel yet. I haven't really done much with that, which I probably should. Well, I mean, it seems like because all of them are scrambling to try and capture what, you know, the and magic copy of each other has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it, you almost have to do all of them now to make sure you're capturing all of the, the, the audience, which the we audience. talked before, yeah. the time sink involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I mean, Twitter, I think Twitter, I don't, I don't usually go out there, but I have yeah. automated stuff. I know. Okay. <laughs> I know. Cause every time I'm on Twitter, I see <laughs> that. <laughs> no. Yeah. That is the I'm nice like, thing about Twitter. Twitter. I feel never like it's respond. the most compatible like, oh, she doesn't love me. Yeah. with yeah, like, <laughs> scheduling. Yeah. Like, scheduling posts. I go out and I have like 200 things. That, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> and Jenea, you do a lot of Instagram, don't you? Yeah. I primarily do Instagram. Like I said, I am just getting started on, on TikTok. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have a love hate relationship with, with TikTok. That is where the new, you know, book scene is happening. Book talk mm -hmm. is such a big thing. I felt like, uh, I, it would be a wasted opportunity to not try it, mm -hmm. but I prefer the way Instagram is set up. I've been on there a lot longer. And so I feel more comfortable with the app and I have, I have more followers on there. Um, so at the moment, yeah, I, um, focus on my Instagram, but I do a lot of crossover. If I post something on TikTok, right. I will also post it on Instagram, vice versa. Yeah. Do you, I forget when your book came out. Um, June 7th of oh, this was June. last yeah. summer. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So it's, it's almost six months old now and that nice. it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Mm. But you're feeling the pressure for the, the sequel already? Yes, I have written the sequel and I sent it's with my editor now. She's supposed to start in a couple weeks, I believe. Um, and that that's really I think when when I'll know <laughs> you know, kind of kind of an end to my suffering at least, because I am definitely feeling the pressure of the the sequel and the imposter syndrome of of living up to the the first book. The first book was the easiest thing I have ever written it was almost effortless it was like this story was just in me and it came out and it was beautiful and i mean yes i i did a lot of editing because it wasn't perfect but the second book it was not fun to write you're uh, scrutinizing you're scrutinizing every line 
yes mm -hmm. and i the second book honestly goes to a very dark place and i mm. think that that's partially why it was so difficult because the characters were going through really difficult things and so you have to be in that headspace with them yep. mm -hmm. uh, so it was not it was not as as much fun but i am happier with how it turned out now i rewrote probably 75 percent of the book twice what um wow yeah it was wow. it was quite the undertaking because i started writing the second book um almost immediately after finishing hmm. smoke and other storms like the very first draft i i don't like to wait too long in between projects uh -huh. like i uh, <laughs> writing is something i really enjoy and so it's always been my my go-to like hobby stress relief this sequel which is titled ash like vengeance Ooh, um nice. was not yeah like i said not fun and it really <laughs> made me question why am i doing this, <laughs> this is yes. my stress i've, I've had that question stress <laughs> i've yeah, had that question Eric, you you felt that too with sarakor salvation we Honestly, with Sorcor, it was the first time I really wrote like an actual emotional fight between the main characters, Cam and Viv. And it's like mm -hmm. the first book is them just kind of discovering that they, they actually have feelings for each other. Mm -hmm. But this book, because of how they get into trouble again, it was mm -hmm. just very, <clears throat> I came at it from, at least from what I hoped, a very complex angle. Because mm -hmm. both of them have their goals. Both of them have what they want to yes. get out of you know, be, being with each other. But when they have that emotional fight, like I literally, I couldn't write for a week after that, after I wrote that. Mm -hmm. It just, mm -hmm. it affected me on such a level that I was just like, man, I, I feel like put everything into this. But then like Jenea being my beta reader, when, when she <laughs> said, you know, I feel like the first time around, I think Viv needs to have more of like her goals. Like what are her, what does she actually want to get out of this, point from this point on now that they're together mm -hmm. great yeah but you know adding the extra goals can really yes. bring even more emotion to to this scene yes. and when i mm -hmm. i but, like the life goals yeah like yeah. round her out as a character and yeah you did such a beautiful job with that mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I always hope it says something that you were emotionally drained after writing yes. mm -hmm. that bit yeah. you put all of that emotion into it so your readers will feel it no. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was a tough book too because I've never done it where you experience the trauma with the villain mm -hmm. at the end of the book. Mm. Because of because of time travel. Yeah. 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 And I yeah, like when I was beta reading, I got to that like end of the book and I I think I read probably close to five hours that day to finish it. Like I'm kind of a slow reader, but um, yeah, I, I got probably to the last like third of the book and I just could not stop. I was like, I have to find out what happens. That's the sign of a good read right there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I had a few beta readers that were like, you know what? I hated Aerosmith until I got to that part. And then and they would say, that's a good villain. When yeah, you, always you, hope. you you kind of feel for him on on some level, like you you humanize him a little bit, and then it gives perspective to everything that they do, and yeah, very complex emotions. He, he was, one of the keys to writing yeah. a good character is is creating mm -hmm. empathy for them. If you can feel what they're feeling, you can understand their motivations, whether good or evil. You're mm -hmm. connecting with that character, and you will be invested in what happens to them. Mm -hmm. But you don't understand why until that certain point. Like, I don't even yeah. tell what happens to him at the very beginning. It's just yeah. you read about him and you're like, man, this guy sucks. Like, he's such a <laughs> yeah. jerk. Why is he such a jerk? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who terrible? hurt him? <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed that, that villains are way more relatable in the last couple of years? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Either we're doing a better job writing them or it says something about us mm. and humanity yeah. <laughs> there's a meme that i've got where it's like it's the the two faces it's that 
and that uh uh-huh face and it's that when you're low-key reading about a villain and you're understanding (laughs) and agreeing with them like yeah (laughs) i think we're all kind of feeling that (laughs) still not a fan of jeffrey dahmer though (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 I won't yeah. watch that series. I'm, no, I'm not going to watch that one. Yeah, no, it, it, I can't. it doesn't interest me at apparently, all. <laughs> apparently, that was a popular Halloween uh, costume. Wow. Yeah, like, and like theme for like, like food for Halloween parties. I'm like, mm, not, Honestly, no, no thanks. To me, it's like, why are you glorifying him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With what yeah. he did. Right. I anyway. feel, yes, I feel that it disrespects the victims and their families and that's yeah. why i'm yeah i'm like i i'm not interested in in this no it's not no. for me <laughs> speaking no. of halloween i have to ask derek did you dress up as a dinosaur i did not oh. i did not no it was like a wasted opportunity honestly i was busy with other Listen. stuff that night and i just i didn't <laughs> you didn't you could have you could have dressed up as like someone from sorrowful i could have I could have. No, nah, yeah. I just I had other stuff going on that night. But uh, I will say the other fun thing that came from Aerosmith. The, the so the name of the villain. His last name is Aerosmith, like bow and arrow. Aerosmith. But mm-hmm. I I made a lot of Aerosmith the band jokes that were just. <laughs> <laughs> and I I love puns, so I was I was there for that. <laughs> it's like early but on. I love Aerosmith. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I love is because like yeah, the kids may not get the puns, like the younger generation, but yeah. our generation, we know Aerosmith. So it's just like when they're talking about Aerosmith and they're kind of talking about what he, like who he is, what he is and then mm-hmm. at the end of the one chapter Cam goes, "I have one question about this Aerosmith guy. Does this dude look like a lady?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like, yes. and i think that's what makes the book like that to so Tyler. great too is that it has the appeal for kids you know yeah. it is it is young adult but yes you put in all these little things for like us grown-ups yeah yeah it was so much fun and who doesn't love good puns Yes. Right. Yes. Exactly. Right. We were just I talking about that, actually. Like yeah. Puns. Yeah. <laughs> Janae and I were just talking about that. How much we love puns. Mm-hmm. It's like my grandfather on my mom's side. He was. He always had a joke, ready to go. And it was just like, how? How do you? He had such an encyclopedia of jokes. But the worst was when I was on a trip with him and he would tell the same joke over and over to everyone we met. Oh. And then I'd try to walk away and he would reach out as I was walking away, grab my shoulder and bring me back. <laughs> so I had to hear it again. <laughs> yeah, that becomes torture then. It was, a you captive know audience. Fun memories. Fun memories. No. Do you remember any specific jokes? Any good ones? His favorite yeah. one to tell was, you know what? I used to date a girl, and every night before bed, she'd brush her hair eight times. And the next night, she did the other leg. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. What? what? Excellent. I, I still remember <laughs> the dirty joke my mother said. My mother said, and my mother doesn't tell dirty jokes. So when no. I overheard this, I just died. <laughs> You want me to do it? You okay, set it up. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> you can't just um, give us the box and then not let us open the box. Right? <laughs> What's in the box? The seven dwarfs are standing on each other's shoulders and looking in Snow White's window. And the first one goes, Snow White's taking off her dress. Snow White's taking off her dress. Snow White's taking off her dress. All the way down the line. <laughs> Stoic's taking off her panties. Stoic's taking off her panties. Stoic's taking off her panties. All the way down the line. Prince Charming's coming. So am I. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, and you have to understand, my mother is just so prim and proper. To just hear her say that, I was like, <laughs> shocked <laughs> it's usually funny because you're not expecting it yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that extra layer so much funnier yep. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got one for you i got one for you okay <laughs> how can you find the blind man at a nude beach <laughs> it's not hard <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's <laughs> <good>. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, see, well timed 
bad jokes are just perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, they Love are. It. Love it. Welcome to Saturday night. <laughs> what else are we going to do? No. I, know. <laughs> I did actually have one person that did a TikTok review and she said that Cam, because Cam is very much like me, like I'm ready with a joke almost 24 seven. And she said that Cam was almost annoyingly funny. <laughs> and I was like, I, I can be annoyingly funny too, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> whatever. And yeah. I kind of see it for him as like, almost like a, a, a deflection, like a coping yes. mechanism. Cause he seems to get funnier That's me. when he's stressed out. And so yeah. like when, <clears throat> when things are happening and he's telling these jokes, I think some people you know, that's not their coping mechanism. So maybe that reader was like, well, like, yeah. what? Like, why would you be, you know, cracking jokes when, you know, all of this is yep. going on? But yeah, that's what I felt like. <laughs> yeah. It was, the coping mechanism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like, was I'm it a very like hopeful guy too. humor? Uh, no, it was just kind of making fun of the situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I like, my, my father in law is very much like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, he he could go on a diet and when you bring it up he just he it deflection mm -hmm. right it's like you want him to be better because you love him but he feels like you're picking on him so then he resorts mm -hmm. to humor huh? yeah mm -hmm. yep. right so and i it happens to me too if someone brings something up to me i'm not perfect it's like mm -hmm. well <laughs> i'll just i'm just gonna joke about what you just said to me <laughs> yeah well that's I think we a all nicer do it. way yeah. too than like you know the other side getting mad you know if somebody you know says something you yeah. don't like yeah telling a joke is much but, more harmless yeah but no, that's a, a very good quirk to give one of your characters mm -hmm. you know it's, it was it's very playable. yes it was very realistic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah i'm loving the characters in smoke and other storms though <laughs> all the characters oh, so like glad. when you said that it just came out of you it feels like you were planning this book for years I mean, maybe I was planning it like subconsciously for years because there mm. there were tiny little details in it that I like remember like writing some flash fiction or something that like featured some of the same like tropes maybe or um, mm. when um, well, there's there's four sisters in the book. I am one of four sisters. Um, so there was that kind of like little family inspiration but when we were younger we used to um play a scenario with our our dolls that they were a rich victorian family that owned a train and they would all travel around the country on the train and they lived on the train and then like that always stuck with me and then mm. it kind of yeah i was like oh yeah i could put that in this book they could live on a train that would be really cool so there, mm -hmm. there were little little things that kind of pre-existed awesome. and yeah they all came together at the exact right moment and it became and voila. perfect so perfect. back on the topic of, of characters and their quirks what different quirks did you give to each of these sisters and were they based off of some of <laughs> your family's quirks um not not the quirks i guess um adelaide is one of the point of view characters her main work is the stranger who is a kind of mysterious entity and i won't i won't say too much about it because i yeah, love that part book. of it but yeah she she has this this entity with her and they're they're separate but they're also like together in yeah yeah uh, it's kind of it's kind of odd to explain it but um, the stranger is hyper aware of everything that goes on and because her this entity is kind of entwined with Adelaide's mind she, Adelaide is also hyper aware of everything so she counts her steps everywhere she goes she notices things she has near perfect recollection for details and memories and, and conversations and that you know that works for you and against you you know if you don't if you can remember everything, you know, that's awesome in one sense, but if, you know, you can't forget any bad things either. So. Yeah. That trauma stuck with you forever. Yeah. Yeah. I said to her too, uh, it really reminds me of, do you guys ever watch the show Psych? I have not. I've watched a couple episodes. 
So with Psych, with Sean Spencer, he's always hyper aware of basically everything going on everything. around him too, like just very mm -hmm. detail oriented. And in the very first episode of the show, as a kid, his dad asked him, he says, how many hats are in the room? They're in a little cafe. And he goes, close your mm -hmm. eyes, tell me how many hats are in the room. And so he closes his eyes and he counts every single hat on every person that was in that, in that cafe. Mm -hmm. And the stranger in this book reminds me so much of that. I'm like, well, I can, I can dig this because I love yeah. the show yeah. and I love that part of it. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was a challenging aspect to write, but yeah, it was one of like the, the very first things that I decided about the book hmm. was the, the concept of the stranger. Cool. <clears throat> Yeah. And those those quirks again, it feeds into the the empathy. And if we connect mm -hmm. with the character, we want to see what happens. We follow them to the end. Mm -hmm. So, which character yeah. is you? Um, I mean, Adelaide has aspects that I identify with very deeply. Okay. But the character that I actually feel like ended up the most like me is Tesla. The oh, the really? Effects. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And it, it kind of snuck up on me in, it was actually in the second book that I kind of realized, I was like, I'm a lot more like her than I, mm. than I originally intended or even you know realized was happening. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I've had it multiple times now where people have said, so I've read Dino Rift or I'm reading Sorcore now and you are definitely Cam and Alicia, my wife, is definitely Viv. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah that, that's pretty much our dynamic. Like yeah. my, my mom read the book and she goes, it was like, I was reading you two. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so fun though. Cause it feels yeah. like, you know, we got to know you guys in yeah. this book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm always ready with a joke. My wife is sarcastic and mm -hmm. she's the voice of logic. Meanwhile, I'm like, let's do something fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I'm hoping that because I'm going to Washington for a concert, Washington, D.C., uh, in Dino Rift, which also was one of my TikTok videos. Um, ben Rector and Cody Fry are performing in Washington, D.C., and I, I actually put their names and song titles in Dino Rift because the teenagers love their music. And mm -hmm. I've been trying, trying, trying. I still, I'm going to try actually to reach out to Ben Rector's agent to see if I can give them books at the concert. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, that'd Ooh. be sweet. So... That's uh, that's my new mission. Come on, free books. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> invite me up on stage. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll see what happens there. I've I've actually because I I did that video. I've had other people going. Wait, you're coming to Washington? Come visit. Come see me. <laughs> like all these book people, like narrators and uh, bloggers and. You could have a little uh, mini book event, like you, be like, "Hey, I'm gonna could. be at this coffee shop at this time. Like, come Rebecca. say hi." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only there for five days, but uh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna. I'm hopefully gonna go see the Smithsonian. Oh, fun! And it's free, which is great. It, if you can see I the air and space, you can that. see that in yeah? the last year. Yeah. I did not know it was free. Okay. Oops. The air and space like, That's great. is awesome. <laughs> I've heard that. I also, someone told me because I wrote superhero spy books, they go, mm -hmm. it would be a missed opportunity if you did not go to the International Spy Museum. Yes. Oh, I yes. did not know that. that I, was, <laughs> yeah. I was like, if you don't yeah. know about the, the International Spy Museum, like I, ha yeah. I have to tell him, like, you have I know to now. go. Yeah, mm. yeah, do it. Now, will you be so. taking pictures of your book in random places? We'll see. I mean, I've already got people that are like, can you bring books with you and I'll pay you when you get here? <laughs> I'm like, I, I can. Shipping hey, from Canada is ridiculously expensive. Oh, so yeah, God. it's probably yeah. cheaper to do it that way. <laughs> yeah. I went to the post office the other day to send a book from where I live to literally three hours away, almost $20. And I was like, no. Like I told, I, I told the person, I, I go, I don't feel bad if you order this from Amazon. I really don't. Yeah. Get, get signed book plates and mail them signed book plates. But even yeah, right. Expensive. There's yeah. 60 cents a piece mm -hmm. in, in, in this, the States now. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. This, this, yeah. At might, least this might in be the, the US. I, I don't know if Canada has parts. this. <laughs> Is, um media mail if you're sending i wish we had media in mail. the continental u.s yes. media mail i wish we had it so much thing. 
It's a lifesaver. Yeah. So it where really are you is. out of? Where are you? I know you're in Canada. But I am um, a little bit north of Seattle at the moment, Washington. Okay. So I'm on the, okay. the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And I so wish we had media mail because I, I did a contest two, hmm, maybe a year and a half ago. And the person that won was from Puerto Rico. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. And I had never done an international thing before. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I pulled up quotes from different like FedEx, everyone. It was close to 80 bucks. And I'm going, mm. and then I remembered my name. Well, Isabella Tugman, Izzy, that was on last time with me with Katie. And I said to her, how much would it cost you to send a book to Puerto Rico from where you are using media mail? And she goes, well, it probably wouldn't cost me much. So for about $15, I sent it to Izzy. And mm -hmm. guess how much it cost Izzy to send it from there in Arizona to Puerto yeah. Rico? <laughs> Literally just a little bit over $3. Yep. yep. And I yep. went, less, holy like cow. Less than five bucks. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've done media like, mail from Hawaii. It's like, yes. Really? <laughs> I'm wow. surprised Canada doesn't have an option like that. that I is, wish yeah. we did. It's not yeah. fair. Just <laughs> it's really not to get fair. on it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We're so well, it's even like our local post office is closing on random days. Mm. And I don't know why. They just decide, and like, I don't want to go to work today. I don't know if it's because we have also like a union strike here at the moment for mm. people that work in schools, not necessarily teachers, but like custodians and all that kind of thing. Mm. And I know unions support unions. So whether that's part of them just kind of walking off the job for a day or so, I don't know. I, that's, I'm not going to assume, but that's kind of what I'm putting together. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, by by the way, a little a little self promotion here. I am running a giveaway in yes, honor of my book's six yes, month is. anniversary. Um on my Instagram, the handle is at Ninjanea author. Um on on this subject, unfortunately, it is only available to residents of the US because mm -hmm. of shipping. I am a poor author slash student <laughs> and I can't afford to yeah, pay, you know, twenty to eighty bucks to mm -hmm. ship a book so sadly only us residents won't want but you know mm -hmm. amazon yeah. amazon is, is available we'll be <laughs> sure to put your I do, instagram I do US link as well. at the bottom mm -hmm. huh we'll be sure to put your instagram link at the bottom yeah. in the show notes after we're done so that if people are watching they can easily find you yeah we put up her graphic already right oh, no yeah did we? Uh, I don't think we did hold on let me, the let me one double that check kind of like the the promo yeah, that was yeah. yeah there we go yeah, I don't think, I think that, that was before has... we went live. No, yeah, love it when she was talking oh, about it. it. This came up, <laughs> okay. All right. Jane's on cool. it, she's the organizer here. More promo, yeah. more promo. <laughs> yes. I'm just sitting back watching it, just watching all the things and looking at the pretty poems and yeah. looking at the time and the live button. <laughs> But yeah, for anybody who's watching after the fact, we will yeah. have the link in the show notes down below on our YouTube channel. So check that out. That way you can easily find her and get in on this contest because that's an awesome, awesome prize. Mm -hmm. Grab it now. Also, right, Janaea. Like yeah, right, meow. Right, meow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Janaea also wants me to write right? a megalodon. More presents to give. Yes, yes I, I want megalodon. <laughs> she wants me to write a megalodon into my next dinosaur book. Are you going to write a third one? Um, I'm currently working on a spinoff. Okay. And I have and another spinoff so in the works. Uh, the newest one is called Orva, but uh, it is a dystopian. I think I've talked about it before, where it's a 7th century English woman that's trapped in an android-run dystopian and befriends a saber-toothed tiger. Huh. Yes, I think I think we it briefly talked familiar. about this. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the one so. where the protagonist is like in her 30s. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. We talked about that, how that is like kind of an overlooked age yeah. group. It's always, you know, 16 There's more year people olds, asking and then for you it. have, yeah, like, you know, the, the older characters, like, well, older, you know, like, you're still young you're still how, okay how young are you 
How young am I? <laughs> I am 57. You're still young. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and now 30. Probably, probably yeah. showing my stri stripes. Yeah. Hey, no, I, I, her I love over. like silver, <laughs> silver hair. Um, yep. Oh, I, I wonder. I, I wonder going, why. Oh, I wonder ah, why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like, if I, I was to wake up to my wedding and all my hair had had gone gray, I would be thrilled. I would love it. Yeah. My mom was a preemie, and I think when she turned forty-ish, mm, she just let it just completely go gray. She like she dyed her hair and everything, but then yeah. when she just let it go, people would come up to her and go, "Did you get that professionally done?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful i see women with yeah like they're just letting their natural gray come out and every yeah, time it. yeah this, i'm like this oh is, your hair. this is covid this, this is from covid yeah. i got i got too too lazy yeah. <laughs> it reminds like, me to put hair dye on yeah. my list and, and <laughs> i'm not like, doing it it actually looks really <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think you could rock it katie no no i've already got <laughs> way too much gray if i don't dye yeah. it like every six weeks no <laughs> Yeah. Light I'm getting more salt and pepper in mine. You, you've been with me while I've been growing it. <laughs> but it looks good on you. It does. It looks, okay. yeah, it looks so good. Thank you. Yeah, yes. yeah I got the salt and pepper going a little bit. You can't really yeah. see it in this light, but I'm at one point, I think it's it's this section right here has a lot of silver in it. Guys mm -hmm. can get away with that though. Yeah, they they can. Yeah, yeah, that's the area yeah. that, that guys usually get it right on the you know the mm -hmm. corner of the crowns. Yeah. I don't know. It could be really cool if it if only one side like goes. Gray yeah, right. And have, like, the, the split. People pay a lot of money to get that done at the salon. Funny you should mention that. For some reason, I don't know why. If this is just my genetics or what, but this side of my chest has gray, but this one does not. <laughs> I have no idea weird. why. It's so weird. But like weird. this side of my body has more gray hair. I have bodies, no idea. Bodies were crazy. And I Are you know, like yeah. sitting in the sun and the sun is sitting <laughs> the entire time? Let me just block this side. Hold on. <laughs> oh, the shade. <laughs> <laughs> so like once a month we get just for men going down one side to keep it. <laughs> oh, I can't have it on this side. No, I need more. I need more. <laughs> but that it was like, funny. it was one day I, I, I looked down and I'm going, why this is so weird <laughs> like how <laughs> yeah it, i don't know the same but it's not it's like i have more hair on this side of my head like it's thicker on this side than now this see side. that actually goes for everybody for everyone yeah. they actually have a side of their body that grows more hair than, than the other yeah and it, it's just yeah you would think that it would be the same but nope <laughs> no mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so, so maybe a character in the future works to put for your characters and your neck. Right, right. Yeah. Dude, put, Derek, put that in there. Someone with the, the chest hair and two, like two tone. It would be so random. <laughs> It'd be so but random. Memorable. People would be like, how did you come up with that? Yeah. Be like, this situation so is creative. weirder than my chest hair. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I kind of got grazed just on one half of my chest, but let's move on, shall we? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yep. Perfect. <laughs> like drop that and then walk away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's how you end a chapter. Yeah, that's a mic yep. drop. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, no. that's but yeah, but you I are I, going to be working on more books because I remember the the when we talked yeah. before you were releasing this one, you were very apprehensive about you know the the imposter syndrome, the sequel pressure, and wondering if your readers were going to really you know latch on to it like they did the yep. first. Are and you feeling like, more confident? I know I wrote a lot of sequels, obviously with 10 books in the Ultimate Agent series, but I felt like with Dino Rift, like Dino Rift was the first book that really, and I know success is relative to everybody, but Dino Rift was the first book that really people started to notice. Okay. Me. And it's like, yeah, I had built up the readership over five years, but I just didn't realize how many people still love dinosaurs. And oh, then yeah. because Dino Rift did yeah. so well, I was like, well, hopefully this next one lives up to the hype. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, people, people love dinosaurs. And I feel like the pool for dinosaur books is, you know, pretty shallow. There's not, it's there's not, not very a big. lot there. And so, no. like, to, yeah, to get one and to get one that's actually good, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. There's there's that. No offense to anybody. Yeah. I'm not like I grew up reading. Names. Yeah, I grew up reading the Dinotopia series, and I love mm -hmm. the Dinotopia series. But other than that, for young adult dinosaur books, there really isn't much. Mm -mm. So now I I have another mission. I keep talking about missions, um, of trying to build up that corner of the universe that I have. Of yeah, you know, I have another idea where there's going to be a uh, widower who looks after a ranch in Southern Texas. And he basically just takes in dinosaurs that are randomly found. Ooh, love that. And I'm also going to have yeah. a teenager <laughs> that she's in school. And like, I'm just going to totally pull from when I was bullied as a kid mm -hmm. and put that on her. But then as she tries to help a dinosaur that she's found, she doesn't know where to take it. And then she learns about this guy. Mm -hmm. and takes it there and it's going to be kind of a found family aspect but it's also going to be because Sorokor is now well that's a spoiler mm -hmm. how do i explain how do i how do i explain this i just gave you the thing. box i just gave you the box <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically there's going to be some butting heads because mm -hmm they're going to want the dinosaurs that the widower has, but the widower mm -hmm. feels like he's looking after the dinosaurs and kind of filling the void from the partner that he's lost. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some kind of like his, his children, his found children. Yeah. So there's going to be the ethical part of that too. It's like, well, yeah, you've taken on these dinosaurs, but really they don't belong in this time. Right. And mm -hmm. just because they're on your land, like, are they actually yours? Yeah. So, I yeah, know there's romances with dinosaurs. <laughs> romance yeah. books. for romances, right? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. yeah. I'm not touching hey, on the romance angle. I think there's uh, Taken by the T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yeah. Like yeah. I said, there are dinosaur books. Not all of them are. There, there's some erotica <laughs> books. That... Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. No. That's no. A... Oh, yeah. That's a genre. <laughs> oh, no. That's, That's not on my radar. Have. It is yeah. not on my radar. Not at for me, all. but you do you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you but, just gotta wonder with the T Rex with those little arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> There's a lot of questions and I'm I'm scared to ask them. Uh, it's so funny. Ever since I like even published Dino Rift, it's like you publish a book about dinosaurs and everyone just sends you everything dinosaur related, even taken by the T Rex. Mm. It's you, just you like, actually got that as a gift. No, no, it's just they send me pictures. Yep. Oh, they'll they'll totally. send me the pictures and the gifts, uh -huh. and then all of a sudden someone's like, Hey, have you seen this book? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> I've seen it like 30 <laughs> times now. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> that, that's them, that's the your first thing time now. You're the dinosaur yeah. guy. Yeah. You, you yeah. are though. Like I have some people um that I refer to you as Dino Derek. I, like, oh, you know, my friend died time. of Eric. I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, hey, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take mm -hmm. it. Just know yeah. there's a market if you ever want to expand into. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Next time if I come on the show, I'm romance. changing this from Born Identity to Dino Derek. <laughs> okay. Dino Derek. Change it now. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess I can. Change it now. All right. Change it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, no, once no. you're labeled as something, you kind of become like the the informal expert on it, and and everyone yeah. wants to relate to you by sending call memes and an gifts expert, and all that though. stuff. I wouldn't call myself an expert. It's just a lot of research. You're you're the expert. Yeah, mm, at this point, debatable. you're the expert. I don't know if you if you <laughs> know more than the average person, you you can claim expert, and the average person, you know, they can't really tell you you're wrong. And and let's just quantify this too. Author research is generally pretty in depth. I love it. Yes, mm -hmm. I love it so much. Until mm -hmm. you get down the rabbit hole, though. That no, that yeah. is author research. It's all well, rabbit holes. It's yeah. all yeah. rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look up and it's three o'clock in the morning. Like, dang it, what did I do? How, like, yeah. how did I get here? <laughs> yeah, and that that was a fun thing that I really liked putting in Dino Rift and Sorcor is because, like a lot of dinosaur content would have never existed if the first dinosaurs had never been found. Mm -hmm. And so in Soracor, mm -hmm. I put in the Megalosaurus, which is actually the first T-Rex kind of uh, carnivore that was ever found. 
And mm-hmm. so I decided to yeah, put it in Sorkle. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you put that in there, it's like if there was no discovery, if there was no Megalosaurus, then Jurassic Park would have never been written. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would have never been inspired by that to write Dino Rift yes. in Soracore. Do, so do we kind... even touch on the disappointment that was the last film? I loved it. You loved it? I, I loved seen it. it yet. I watched I the, seen it. the extended version is better. Okay. Okay. The extended version Noted. is better. It gives a little bit more into the villain of Dodgson. Yeah. And there's a yes. few there's a few more dinosaur scenes, especially there's one with blue that's actually pretty cool. Okay. okay. All right. I'll I'll take your word for it because the, no. the actor okay. so, was so not as All right. no. it was disappointing the, to me. I, I go into things with no expectations. Mm-hmm. And that's probably a good mindset. I'm I'm kinda like you. I, I haven't yeah. seen it because I haven't had a chance yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, you know what? Your your opinion is valid, Katie. Like mm-hmm. I know there were people that just they're like, oh, this is the last one for Jurassic World. Actually it's not. But no. um <laughs> they're doing not. they're it's gonna do more money. stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do more stuff. But it's like I saw it from I know they had a tough time filming it because it mm-hmm. was during COVID. Mm-hmm. And when you are filming parts and then you can't all of a sudden film parts, it does feel a little disjointed. Mm-hmm. And okay. I, I will admit, even for me, I felt like Chris Pratt phoned in his performance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just, you know, to see the original characters like Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler mm-hmm. and, yeah. you know, just Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum. Um, Jeff Goldblum, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. just, yeah, it, to, it brings I, back yeah. those memories, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I have to wait till my son comes to, to watch it. Cause, okay. Or, or when he's out doing yard work. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. you know, my I love my husband, Jilly, but he's a sports guy. Yeah. And, and you know, and all of that, and not the DC world, not the Marvel okay. world, not the okay. Jurassic world and all of that. We He's not a nerd. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So, you know, when, when I was home, when we were, when our kids were younger, my son and I used to go watch things. Hmm. And my daughter and him used to watch the country music fest and things okay. like that. So, so you know it's weird <laughs> no. just, you know what works like you know what doesn't <laughs> yeah. that's healthy yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah no so. and i saw some of the things in dominion that i saw it was almost like a dig on monsanto uh-huh very clear. very much so yeah and i actually mm-hmm. yeah it, it really as soon as they got into the whole grasshopper thing and and the crops i was like hmm monsanto very, very much a dig on mm-hmm. Monsanto. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they and I appreciated that part. No, <laughs> yeah. no. And it's like, it is something we should talk about because yeah. not only is Monsanto putting chemicals into the world that's, you know, hurting people and causing cancer, no matter how many times they say, well, the studies don't show, well, they're paying for those studies to be yeah. Know, yeah. pushed if you're, under. If you're paying for the study, you, you know, you can't really trust what the, what the no. study mm-hmm. says or statistics. You know, you can warp statistics to anything you want it to be, depending on, you know, the yeah. math you use. Yeah. But yeah, I, I appreciated it for what it was. Cause uh, like I said, when you're filming through COVID, like I expect things yeah. to not go co- super cohesively. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That, well, like, you, it's still, you get think to about still that, see cool yeah. dinosaurs. Yeah, true. Yes. I true. wanted more exactly. dinosaurs. I think that was part of the disappointment. Uh, like yeah. there was yeah. less yeah. focus on the dinosaurs, which, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what most people want from it. Yeah. yeah. But there were dinosaurs that they put in the movie that I was very excited for because I actually put them in Dino Rift first before Dominion Ooh. came out. Oh, cool. Uh, and I was like, hey, this is great. We need more of this. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the Therizinosaurus, that thing is so cool. It's like Wolverine. It's like a dinosaur that has Wolverine claws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That thing was I so cool. about that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 
But. And the fact that you can say what it is. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Say he's not I'm pretty expert. impressed with that. Quetzalcoatlus, uh, Ornithomimus. No. You, um, you can pronounce all of them, not just, you know, write about them. Yeah. Come on. Right. You're an expert. This, this exactly. is five-year-old me coming out right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. and that could be you know playing what was into success your your passion yeah. comes through into the story mm -hmm. and readers can yeah. feel that passion yes and it was very humbling when people were actually saying that uh dino rift and now Sorcor salvation are better than jurassic world dominion like, when awesome. people were saying that i was like really are you talking to me right are you are you being <laughs> serious right now Take the compliment. Oh, I'm yes. I'm very bad at taking compliments. Word. I don't know how. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. You Gail, deserve it though. You? you deserve it. It's it's mm. yeah, it's it's a deserved compliment. But us the being authors, we always look at our books even after they're published and we're going, eh, We see could've... the flaws. It's true. Yeah. It's true. yeah. Imposter I, I can't is real. I can't like read out of mine. Really, because I'll, I'll, I'm still noticing things mm. like, oh, I would have, I would have tweaked this, I would have tweaked this, but I'm like, mm. okay. At some point, you have to stop and let it go and say, you know, it's yeah. done, move on. You could, yeah. you could edit something forever, but you'd never finish. And yep. it would However, never be shared. Yep. However, after quite a few years to to pick something back up and read it, because I had to edit my book down a little bit to to make mm -hmm. it into the. <laughs> into the hardcover for all six books i did the ryan chronicles and and yes i edited it so it's you know there are some things that bothered me that i fixed <laughs> yeah. well you but, got you got the opportunity right exactly yes. but you realize a how far you've come in writing and mm -hmm. b true how powerful some of your stories are mm -hmm. that you didn't realize until you stepped away for so long and then read yes. them again. Yeah. I cried. And mm. it, it, as the writer reading it, I cried. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I forgot that. how heart wrenching this is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's made me want to write a, another sequel that has that family. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> nice. So that's coming next year, I think. Yeah. After Katie and I awesome. write, a, that's exciting. write a series together. Yeah, that's right. We have our series we gotta finish. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, you too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice to write something for myself again. I haven't yes. written strictly my own stories in what almost three years now. Really? Yeah. Was, yeah. was that the last? No, you yeah. wrote one after that, didn't you? Write one of their I wrote the fourth series? book in the Agents of Asset series and then I stalled out on the fifth before right. COVID, the move, the divorce, all that yeah. fun stuff. Yeah. And then I switched gears into ghostwriting. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So I haven't really written, uh, you know, the two books that I did put out, some of that stuff is 100% mine, but not all of it is. So mm -hmm. I can't claim it as like mm -hmm. brand new material. It's not a novel. It's it's more like nonfiction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. it'd be nice to get back to writing something that's actually... Fun. Passion project. Mm -hmm. Fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I promise I won't kill too many people. <laughs> no, we need to kill lots of people. Lots and okay. lots more people. Everybody dies in the end. Shakespeare <laughs> ending, guys. Shakespeare ending. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, since we are, are down to the wire here, we're almost at the end of our uh -oh. hour. Before we go, let's give you both each each a chance. Man, I can't talk now to promo your work tell everyone where to find it and um jl since you've got a, a promo running on instagram we'll start with you yes um visit my instagram at ninjane author um the link will be down in the credits or wherever that you said you were going to put it um i'm running a giveaway right now for a signed paperback copy of smoke and other storms it is only available to residents of the u.s because of shipping costs um, you can also find the book on amazon in paperback and ebook format um, it is on barnes and noble for kindle um, i also have a few signed copies available for sale on my website jldelavega.com and we will have the links in the show 
uh, notes on our YouTube channel after this. So if you're watching this after the fact, just check the notes below. The links will be there. I and already have a signed copy of Smoke. Well, what do you? <laughs> 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 no, we did a that was a book trade, right? We did it. We did a book yeah. trade. That's how yeah, that's I got right. this this yeah. little beauty right here. Dino Riff. Oh, it looks so nice on my shelf. It's so pretty. They're 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 next to each other. They're both shelf. really pretty. Oh, pretty. I mean, I love the covers on I love both the, of them. The colors mm. like kind of match. Yeah. They do. That's true. That's true. We got the, the banner there. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. It's actually funny it. because uh I sent a book to Molly, my cover designer in the UK. It took a week for it to get from Canada to UK. I was very impressed. Oh, that's not bad. And not she bad sent me uh she sent me a voice message that as soon as she got it, she goes, The colors look so good. And to have them <laughs> like she has both books now side by side, and she's like, they actually and they're I love so vibrant. How the, the rift. Yeah. that continuity and the design yeah. oh, I, I live for little details like that <laughs> <laughs> so uh Sorcore salvation is the sequel to dino rift uh again a love letter to my fans i put so much heart and soul into this book and hopefully that comes across um you can find it on amazon for ebook and paperback uh there will be an audiobook in the works uh, I, I haven't yet uh, officially made it public yet, but a certain someone is coming back. Oh, good. Yay. So, And uh, she's warming up her, her rolling of her R's to do the dodo noises. <laughs> so, which is fun because, again, author research, I found out dodos kind of sounded like pigeons. But instead of okay. the coo, coo, it was more of a. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> okay. So when you read Frodo, again, Frodo the Dodo with a PH because Frodo with an F is trademarked in copyright. Uh, <laughs> it was such a fun book to write, especially with Frodo the Dodo, because, yes, there are Lord of the Rings references. Um, there's the, as I said, Aerosmith puns. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was just so much fun. It is wide as well, so you can find it at all other spots except Apple iBooks. I got to change a, a link in my book to make it properly wide mm -hmm. so all right and again links will be in the show notes below jane anything you want to share before we go um pack magic is coming along and um it's going into a set in january Ooh. yes oh. i i was just about to put it up wide and somebody mentioned a set and i'm like it was somebody who i i really like and like her work and stuff and i'm like yeah I'll do that. <laughs> so it's going to be in KU for three months starting in January. Nice. So. All right. Yes. All right. Very and maybe cool. one day I can convince Jenea to do a, a co-write. If you're up for it. Yeah. I've never done one before. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Katie yeah, and Jay can attest to that. Yeah. I've already done it with uh, Rebecca Reed. Okay. So. Yeah, Katie and I did very well, but we, I mean, we've been each other's beta readers for years, so. Like an old married couple. Styles and stuff <laughs> like that. And, you know. My no, husband, stop it. You can, you can write the, the romance for the book, and then I'll write the, the blood and death. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we are going to be back almost the entire month this month. We've got new shows. Uh, pretty much each week. So thanks for for waiting through our hiatus, but we are back and we will continue to bring more authors to introduce you to, more fun books to introduce you to. And until then, have a great week. We'll see you next time, guys. I didn't time, sing. Guys. I didn't, didn't sing. sing. Uh -huh.